Hello, this is Armin with Open Source RF, and in this video we'll be doing a circuit review of the RF Duino battery shields. There are three shields currently available for the RF Duino. Here is a picture of the coin cell CR2032 battery shield, the single AAA cell battery shield, and the dual AAA battery shield. Here is an example of how the coin cell battery shield and the other shields also work, where you can plug the RF Duino directly on top. And another example of the single cell battery shield showing an LED plugged on top of the RF Duino. And as you can see, they are stackable. The battery shields can run fully standalone, or you can also use them to plug into a breadboard, just like the solderless breadboard pictured, and also use it to supply power to the rest of your circuit. Here's another example showing it plugged into a breadboard with a stackable RGB button shield as well as a coin cell battery shield. You have many different ways of powering the RF Duino through a USB port is one option. And using the USB shield, you can plug it into a small offline wall cube just like this one and have it power from an outlet. Using a USB shield, you can also power it uh, via a cable uh, going to a USB port or a USB power supply, bringing it to your breadboard. And lastly, you can of course power it from any 3-volt source like a bench power supply. And now starting the circuit review of the CR2032 coin cell battery shield and how it interfaces to the RF Duino. Here's the overall circuit and now we'll move into the specifics. Here's the interface pinout to the RF Duino. As you can see, only VCC and ground, all other pins are disconnected. Note since the RF Duino design uh, enables you to stack everything, including even the RF Duino or the battery shields themselves, uh, you can place them in any configuration you like. Uh, you can place the battery on the bottom, the RF Duino on the top, the battery on the top, RF Duino on the bottom, uh, shields in any configuration you like as well. Now as we move down to the power switch, you have an on and off slide switch, which is pictured right here on the upper right hand corner. With that, you can turn power on and off to your circuit while without having to remove the CR2032 battery. There's a reverse polarity protection right here with a FET that enables a very low series dropout voltage. And we have a 10 microfarad cap, uh, which will provide a very low leakage for trade-off of having uh, our um, uh, fast current demand peaks satisfied uh, preventing the CR2032 from being drained too quickly and uh, enabling it to run uh, with a long um, life cycle as possible. And over here we have a power indicator, which is a yellow LED. And as you see, we have a 330 ohm series resistor going to a switch to ground. Reason for this is so if you're using uh, the device in a ultra low power configuration, you're not gonna be wanting to pull a few milliamps through an LED, you can just turn the LED off. And the reason there's a two position switch is just because we use the switch on our other items um, and it's cost effective to just have one common part across all the items rather than a single position switch, which is far less common. And here's the circuit board uh, picture from the top view uh, of the switch and its positions. Also on the back of the board, there's a legend uh, showing which switch position and its function. And that concludes the CR2032 section. Now we're heading into the dual AAA battery shield for the RF Duino. Uh, here's an overview of the full schematic. Uh, this board uh, does have a more specialized regulator on board, and uh, we'll be doing a walk through that, and I'll explain uh, why we used it and its purpose. As you can see, the same connections to the RF Duino footprint, which is just power and ground. Similar circuit with uh, the 10 microfarad bypass cap and also the reverse polarity protection and power switch. As you can see, a very similar uh, type of uh, configuration here uh, with where the power switch is located and a couple of um, switches to turn the LED on and off as well. Uh, very similar between the different boards. And also legend on the back indicating what to do with the specific uh, switch positions. Now with the AAA cells, uh, we've done something a little bit different here. Since these are non-lithium, they're just standard uh, AAA batteries, 
uh, what their curve looks like, their discharge curve, is far more linear. So by being a linear discharge curve, which is dissimilar to the lithium discharge curve, which is fairly flat until you hit about the last 20% of the battery, uh, these type of batteries, uh, which are what we know as conventional AAA batteries, uh, will have more of a linear discharge curve, and as a result, the voltage will begin dropping fairly quickly below 3 volts at 1.5 volts per cell, even though the battery is still at about 80% capacity. And it'll start dropping all the way down until well below 1 volt per, per cell, and those are still decent batteries for use. So what we've done is we've used a step up and down converter right here. This voltage regulator will be able to step up the voltage as well as it'll allow it to step down. And we have a voltage divider over here for the feedback to set the voltage at 3 volts. And this IC with the use of this inductor, what that's going to do is if the voltage drops below 3 volts on the input, meaning the two batteries are drained slightly, uh, it will boost the voltage up to 3 volts. So your input voltage can vary all the way from about a volt all the way up to about 5 volts while your output is still regulated at a clean 3 volt DC. The same yellow power indicator is there with uh, the series shutoff switch and as well this one you have an additional switch available which will enable or disable the function of this regulator. We have a uh, 330k uh, pull down resistor uh, to keep the regulator um, in its uh, off state uh, just in case uh, you have the switch in its open position so we don't have a floating input because we always need uh, all uh, inputs uh, terminated. And of course on the very output uh, we have a 10 microfarad bypass cap uh, for um, the sudden current demands from uh, the RF Duino controller. And down here at the bottom of the schematic is a legend uh, indicating uh, what the two switches do, how we have uh, uh, the bypass and also a normal operation. Now there's an important detail to note. You actually do not need this step up down converter here. You do not need that to use with the RF Duino. The RF Duino will run down as low as about 2.1 volts all the way up to 3.6. The reason you need this device is for the other electronics. For example, if you're running LEDs, if you even drop by a couple of hundred millivolts, uh, those LEDs won't be as bright and some other electronics may not be able to run below 3 volts really well. However, the RF Duino can run all the way down to 2.1 volts without a problem. So you can directly connect two AAA batteries, AA batteries, to C cell, D cell if you want to run for years. Uh, you can definitely do that, or even a 3 volt coin cell battery directly to the RF Duino, and it'll run just fine. So this is only for the other electronics and different shield circuits uh, that you may be attaching. Uh, is why we've added this regulator. It's purely for conveniency uh, for you, so you can run off of uh, batteries uh, without having to worry about um, uh, the voltage levels dropping too low. And this is a uh, switching regulator, so uh, the efficiency is quite high. And now we switch over to the single cell. The single cell circuit is exactly the same. Uh, the only difference between uh, the single cell and the dual cell is this one has a single cell. And as we zoom in a bit further to the schematic of the single cell battery shield, this is a single AAA battery shield, you'll notice how the bypass switch is not connected. Uh, and it is always in the enabled mode. The reason for this is we only have a 1.5 volt input, so therefore we always need the step up regulator for functioning in this case, uh, because uh, no device is going to run off a of 1.5 volt. So we definitely have to step this up. Now you would think, why not just use one cell if you could always use two cells? Um, actually, the other way around. Why use two cells if you could ever only use one? Um, well, the reason for that is when you use two cells, uh, you won't be drawing as much current from the batteries. When you use one cell, you're going to draw double the current from the battery to be able to up the voltage. So as you're trading voltage for current. So that single cell battery is going to die twice as fast as the dual cell battery. So if you want to run twice as long, use the dual cell battery. If you want to run half the time and you want to just swap one battery, uh, then just use the single cell uh, AAA uh, battery shield. And here's the legend on the back of the single cell battery shield showing how 
um, the unused pin or the unused uh, switch position uh, for the bypass. And as you can see, the top view, everything is exactly the same. And this concludes the battery shield circuit review for the RF Duino. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to contact us. We're always happy to help. Thank you for watching.